previous video, we set up a scene for creating a procedurally generated walk cycle. In this video, we will continue working on the project by first learning about inverse kinematics. Kinematics is a field in physics that considers the geometry of motion. When it comes to animation rigs, it's all about how connected bones rotate and move with the ones they are already connected to. Just like when you bend your knee, your foot has no choice but to change location and sometimes rotation. This form of kinematics is called forward kinematics. It is the type used with traditional animation methods and would be the type employed if you used one of the animations that comes with the Mixamo models. Forward kinematics is quite straightforward to calculate. And while this might look quite complex, believe you me, this is just simple trigonometry and geometry. It is way easier than what you're about to see. Inverse kinematics is a completely different matter. It rather solves the problem in reverse. Move the foot and calculate where the knee should be. There could be many solutions for such a problem. For example, if someone grabbed your foot and moved it around, there are a multitude of positions the rest of your leg and knee could go into. This makes for quite a complex mathematical equation to solve, but luckily with Unity's animation rigging package, all the heavy lifting is done for us. All right, so let's start working with inverse kinematics. So we're back in Unity and I've called up my little zombie guy here. His name I actually can't pronounce. So I'm just gonna change that and call him Steve. That'll be easier. So Steve here, we're going to make an inverse kinematic system for his left leg. Okay, and for those of you that are positionally challenged like I am, uh, this is his left leg here. Okay, so we're going to add a target for the end and that's called the end effector. And it's going to basically set the foot so it stays on that position. And as we move it around, the whole leg is going to react to it. Now, what we need to do with this is actually add to it a specialist rig that is going to help with the calculations. So I'm going to click on Steve and what we want to do under this particular hierarchy of Steve, now notice we've got the Mixamo um, bone structure here or armature is another word for it, our skeleton, etc., our rig. We're going to add another one. We're gonna right click and we're gonna create an empty. We're going to call this our um, rig. Just let's just call it rig. Now make sure that the rig itself, if we just roll up the armature part or the rig of the body, that it is outside of that hierarchy. Okay, so this part here is actual mesh for his body and his shoe that's in his head. Uh, don't worry about those. This is all of those components, the, the legs, you know, the spine, all those things. And then we want our rig here. Now with that rig in place, we're gonna go over into the inspector and we're going to add to it a rig. So just type in rig into add component and hit okay and you'll get this come up there. Unity is going to give you a warning about the rig component not being a child of Game Alt with a rig builder. Just ignore that for now. Right, so we're going back to our rig component in the hierarchy. We want to now add in what we're going to call our constraint for our left leg, which is going to be the end effector, or at least hook that up. So we're going to right click. We're going to create an empty underneath there, and we'll call this our left leg constraint. Okay, now our end effector is going to be the thing that our left leg is going to be constrained by, obviously. Uh, it's going to be the thing that our foot is trying to target, I guess. So we're going to create that target just outside our hierarchy at the moment. So right click in here and we'll go 3D object. I'm going to add a sphere. The reason I'm adding a sphere so you can actually see where that end effector is. We will remove the rendering of the sphere later on. Let's call this our left foot target. Okay, and if this is just a little bit too big for you, let's just hit the R key while it's selected and we will just make it just a little bit smaller. Okay, it's just for visual reference. Now I'm going to move that sphere. It's going to be where our left leg is trying to target. So it kind of needs to be 
somewhere near our left leg let's just bring that down a little bit and maybe just across on the left side it's not absolutely critical where you put it because you'll see the effect of it very shortly okay so now we need to hook up our foot target with the constraint so that the rig can do its calculations for us. Let's go back to our left leg constraint that is under our rig. In the inspector, we're gonna add in a component that is going to do all the maths for us. So you wanna search in here for IK constraint. Now there's a bunch of different constraints that you can actually use for calculating the inverse kinematics. As you can imagine, the more and more bones that you've added together in a sequence, the way more complicated the mathematics becomes in order to calculate the like positioning of all those bones and the rotations of the joints as you're moving the end effector. For this exercise, we're doing it very simply and we're just going to use a two bone IK constraint. So click on that two bone constraint. Now it's called a two bone constraint because it basically works with two bones that it's going to figure out the positions of. So let's say it's working out um, in our case, this is our first bone, which is our thigh bone. And then this is the second bone, which is our calf bone. And it's going to use those to actually work out the relative position with respect to our end effector. So coming back to that left leg constraint, you'll notice in the settings for this that we're going to put in the different transforms for our bones that's these things here root mid and tip then we're also putting in the source object which is our target or our end effector we know our target okay we just created it. it's this left foot target sphere so you can grab hold of that and drag it over and put it into the target position now as far as the bones or at least the positions that are going in here so it's three bones Oh, sorry, it's two bones and three joints. We want the root of where that IK system is starting. If we have a look at the leg, we're going to use this one here as our starting point. Okay, so that's our first one. The next one is going to be this one, which is our left leg. And then the left leg foot would be our last position here, which is that down there. Okay, so coming back into our constraint, we want to grab the left leg up as our root. We're going to grab our left leg, which is basically the knee part, to the mid, and then the tip we will put at the left foot. Now, if you're using a different model, to me, things might be named differently. Just be aware of which bones that you are working with. And Depending on how complex the foot structure is of your particular rig, um, you might need to fiddle around with which bones you want to use as the particular tips. The tip that is going to be directed towards the end effector. All right, so back in the hierarchy, remember the rig that we initially set up and it gave us this warning because we actually haven't hooked it all up to make Unity do the calculations. In fact, I'm just gonna rename this rig. Let's call it walking rig, just to make it a little bit more obvious of what it is. Steve, if we go up to the very top of that entire hierarchy, okay, needs to basically calculate this rig, calculate the movements based on the rig. So over in the inspector, we're gonna add a component called the rig builder. So have a look for rig builder, add that in. And now in here, it's going to need to know about some layers. It's gonna add an animator in there. Don't worry about the settings for that. It's pretty much going to be automatic for us. The rig builder here, where it's got rig layers, is going to be that walking rig. So just drag and drop that walking rig over into that spot there. All right, so we're ready to test this. Okay, so we're going to press play. The IK system is only gonna do the calculations in play mode. So you have to press play, otherwise you're not gonna see how things are affected, but you will need your scene window open so you can actually move things around. Now, as you can see, immediately our target of the bottom of the foot heads off to where the um, sphere is located. Now, to see this in action, the IK, if you click on that left foot target, 
and actually move it around. You'll see how Unity is doing all the bone calculations for that particular leg based on these two bones. Remember, we're just doing a two bone constraint in this particular case. Now, what's not very desirable here, you'll see, is the way that the foot has decided it's going to like head up into the air like that. We want it to pretty much stay flat. We want to be able to control that. So the other thing you can also do back with your um, constraints, if you click on your left leg constraint over in the hierarchy, under settings for the constraints is a maintain target offset. This is to basically maintain a relative starting position. Now, what we want to do is to set the rotation offset so that the starting rotation of the foot is going to stay what it was when we start running the system. Okay, so now let's just press play and have a look at that. You'll see now that the foot is maintaining this flat kind of status which is what you want in a sort of walking. And now if we just move that around, you'll see how that works. Okay, and it keeps the foot nice and flat. Now if we go front on, we can actually see how we can do side bends and very unnatural kind of poses because the system is only working with those two bones. It doesn't know that it's impossible for him to say, you know, physically impossible to do something like that. All it's doing is basically keeping the bones connected, making sure that they're the same length and that all of the mesh is actually moving around with it. Okay, now that we've done that, we actually have to do exactly the same thing for the right side. So let's quickly zip through that process. With that done, press play, and if you've got it all set up correctly, both legs are going to snap to their own targets. Okay, when we come back in the next lecture, we're going to start procedurally moving, that is using mathematics and code, these two targets around to replicate a walk cycle. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe, and you can find us at holistic3d.com. Take our full courses at h3dlearn.com and support us on Patreon.